Welcome to this edition of In Conversation. I'm joined by the wonderful Chantelle Knobs of Cullum Fusion. Chantelle, how are you? Very good, thank you. Uh, we are at Engfest today and you've just given a presentation to a room full of uh, young people. Yeah. How did that go? Yeah, it was interesting. It's not something I've done a huge amount before, so it was nice to kind of get their feedback and I guess just see what questions people have about Fusion, what kind of interactions they're having with it. So. Well, to be honest, uh, Fusion for me is something that's, that's somewhat over my head. So um, I, I think a good place for us to start and for, for the viewers that may not be of a, a, an energy background is, uh, so what is Fusion? So nuclear fusion is the process of heating light elements until they have enough energy to overcome their repulsion and fuse together. Uh, and it's the process that powers the sun, and it's a process that we're trying to harness on Earth um, to generate clean energy for the future. So having been to uh, the vicinity myself a, a few years ago, um, can you explain how you go about making uh, this fusion and the experiments you do? Because I believe uh, that, that within your facility you're, you're actually making stars? Yeah, exactly that. So we've uh, learned from processes that take place in the sun um, that uh, particularly the fusion reaction of deuterium and tritium um, is the most uh, viable way of generating uh, huge amounts of energy. And so what we do at CCFE is we've developed a device called JET, which is the Joint European Taurus. And it's a tokamak, so it's a big donut-shaped vessel that uses intense magnetic fields to confine our fuel, so our deuterium and our tritium, into a, a, a specific volume that we can sustain, but encourages fusion reactions to take place. So my understanding is at the moment there's um, a lot of work going into this as a, as a, a main power source, yeah. um, but we're not quite there yet because we're not... Um, uh, is it th the correct term is net positive fusion if I'm yeah if I'm so uh, in jet at the moment the highest power output we've achieved is 16 megawatts which is a huge amount of power it's about enough power for 30,000 homes but it's actually only 70% of the power that we used in the first place to heat the fuel inside jet and so in jet we are actually using uh, we're taking more power off the national grid than we would be able to put back onto it so we're in a, a kind of negative energy gain situation. And so what we need to do is to make our devices more efficient um, and work towards net plasma energy gain. Uh, and this is what ITER, our next device, will be trying to prove. So uh, a couple of bits there, but let's, let's go with ITER then. What, what, what's ITER? So ITER is our new fusion device. Uh, it's being built in the south of France. And it's also based on this tokamak design, but it's going to be much larger in size. So ITER will also have a number of upgrades. So it will use superconducting magnets as opposed to copper magnets that we've used before, which is very old technology. It will have a much larger plasma volume that's 10 times bigger than jet. And it will kind of use this new technology to show uh, how we can extract energy from the plasma using blankets and uh, generate net plasma energy gain. And with ITER, uh, we expect to routinely uh, take out 500 megawatts of power, which is nearly enough for a million homes, uh, but it's also 10 times the power that we required to heat the plasma in the first place. So it's, uh, it's, it will be operating in net plasma energy gain. So uh, this is probably going back to the beginning. I apologize if, if you already know this at, at home, but, but why? Why plasma? Uh, why fusion, sorry, over um, what we, we, we currently have? Yeah, so I guess uh, in terms of nuclear power, um, fission power plants are the dominant uh, way of generating energy at the moment. Um, and fission is uh, a completely different process. So it's the process of breaking apart very heavy nuclei like uranium, as opposed to fusing very light nuclei. And fission power plants generate uh, huge amounts of energy. Um, but as, as I've already said, they use uh, uh, fuel like uranium, which is highly radioactive and it stays around for many years. So uh, one of the key problems associated with fission power plants is this high level of uh, radioactive waste 
um, that stays around long after the machines have shut down for uh, thousands of years. Um, whereas in fusion power plants, uh, we believe that after decommissioning, um, you can actually dispose of all materials within 100 years. So it will be a much cleaner way of producing energy and actually fusion generates more energy than fission. So it's a much more efficient process uh, of generating energy uh, when we can get there. Wow. So when do you think uh, we might see uh, fusion in place? Certainly more commonplace. Is, uh, yeah. That's got to be the end goal, surely? Absolutely. It's been our own goal, obviously, for a long time. Um, what we're working towards at the moment is a device called Demo, which will be a demonstration power plant. And at CCFE, so there'll be many demos that will be created around the world, but at CCFE we're working to design uh, the European demo device. And we hope that it will be able to load power onto the national grid by 2050. And then after that, if it works, we can start creating uh, fusion devices all around Europe and around the world, hopefully. That's fantastic. Chantel, thank you ever so much for spending the time coming to the log cabin and having a chat with us. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.